Hello, I am Sadie Miller and I play Sarah Jane Smith for Big Finish. You're listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. Keep collecting. They all say who. Welcome back to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast, the podcast that explores the unknown world of Doctor Who collecting. All the collectors and their stories, all kinds of Doctor Who merchandise, sometimes just Doctor Who. It's just a fun place to talk about it. Brought to you in part by Forbidden Planet and Bags Unlimited Incorporated. Welcome to the show. I am Larry Van Mersberg and your host. I've been a Doctor Who collector now for 42 years. I began in 1981. Welcome to the 66th episode. We're celebrating 60 years of Doctor Who this year. And just to let you know where I began, I opened up one of the very first Doctor Who stores in Chicago. Not actually brick and mortar, but it became a catalog uh, operation pretty soon. But originally, it was the idea where I would take the shop to Doctor Who fan club meetings. I would set up a table like at a convention, which was not even something we knew about back then and people would buy Doctor Who items. I was able to import them from England. I called the store Bundles from Britain. I was 15 years old. So with that in mind, I didn't think it mattered. I thought I was just doing this. And later, of course, Bundles became a a legitimate company. It actually went on. Uh, I sold my part to my uh, business partner back in the day, and it you know, the name disappeared, other shops came up in its wake, but what really got my attention was a book that I'm going to talk a lot about in this episode. It's called Red, White, and Who, the Story of Doctor Who in America. And when I first got this book, and I got it uh, autographed by most of the uh, authors, I found bundles from Britain on page 384, part of Doctor Who history, that little shop that I used to take from place to place. I cannot, I still can't believe it, even though I tell this story on every podcast, because you can start anywhere. You don't have to start at the beginning. You can start here. Um, Just an amazing thing. So uh, if you, uh, by the way, I have a link to buy this book uh, on the website at doctorwhocollectors.com. It is not something we make money on. Uh, We just want you to have it. And if you don't like the prices at Amazon.com, you can get it directly from ATB Publishing. That's ATB, the letters, and you can find it there. Uh, We are a proud part of the Direction Point Doctor Who Podcast Network. If you are a Doctor Who podcaster and you are not part of Direction Point, you are missing out on gaining audience. Um, And we do that by playing trailers on our podcast for our partner podcasts. Wonderful place to to get your Doctor Who all in one place. Um, So, you know, you can find it at directionpoint.org. And uh, you can join the ranks of great podcasts like uh, Time Streams, Police Box in a Junkyard, Doctor Who Target Book Club, Traveling the Vortex. It's like the number four podcast in the Doctor Who world, uh, as well as Doctor Who Literature and many, many more. So, again, that's directionpoint.org. And, of course, two great resources that I like to include in every podcast episode, just in case you are starting with this one. And that is timelash.com. And under that heading, go to the TARDIS library, create yourself a free account, and keep track of your books, your vinyl, your videotapes, your CDs, your uh, vinyl records, all for free. So we thank Mr. Dan O'Malley, who keeps that site up to date. I have helped keep that site current with some of my information. So it's always nice to have that. If you need to do some more in-depth research, and you might have had on your shelf the How's Transcendental Toy Box books, um, which, by the way, became outdated the minute you got it, um, that is now that has been a website for quite some time. Now I'm getting it to you. It's uh, DoctorWhoToyBox.co.uk, and of course, by How's Transcendental Toy Box, we of course are talking about my good friend David J. Howe one of the top collectors in the world. Um, And uh, he definitely is a great resource for Doctor Who merchandise. Uh, 
So, of course, if you're trying to find Doctor Who items, okay, first of all, um, you know, I want to give you the best information I can. You can find things on sites like eBay or Abe's Books, but you got to be careful. A lot of those prices are a little high. But these are businesses that have been selling Doctor Who almost as long as Bundles from Britain opened back in 1984. In fact, the first place here is uh, DoctorWhoStore.com, Alien Entertainment. Alien Entertainment is owned by my good friend Gene Smith. And, spoiler alert, I talked about selling bundles from Britain to my business partner back in 87, 88, or something like that, or maybe it was 89. Um, my partner was Gene Smith. So there you go. That's where that came from. So he's off and running sales. There are bargain books on the website. Of course, if you're in the Chicagoland area, visit the Alien Entertainment store. Some of the items are a little bit less money in the store than they are online. Also, if you do order online, you can select free pickup from the Lombard location. Usually, if you order on the weekend, those items are brought to the store on Wednesday. So you can browse the incredible selection of Doctor Who and other science fiction items, including Star Trek and Harry Potter, and uh, some uh, lots of great stuff. I mean, there was a Beatles lunchbox in the uh, in the store the other day. So you know, lots of great things to check out. They're open Wednesday through Saturday at the Lombard location, and they're also open at their Logan Square location. So visit AlienEntertainment.com for location and store hours. Uh, you can also find some great items uh, from Forbidden Planet, one of our sponsors. We are still working on our uh, our links to the website. So if you go to DoctorWhoCollectors.com uh, and select Merchandise Links, uh, there are some working links from a Forbidden Planet. We did get some sales through there last year, so thank you so much for using that option. And um, we'll have that up and running. We also have our own eBay store. We get, we get a lot of donations here at the podcast. Uh, people want to get rid of their Target book collections. Um, and sometimes, you know, we buy in bulk, you know, and I'll, I'll take the ones I need and the rest I will pass along at the best possible price that I can. Um, so there you go. All proceeds, of course, from that store benefit the podcast, not me personally. Um, I make sure that the bills are paid. Right now, As of right now, we've got six months of web hosting and podcast hosting paid for uh, through your uh, sales at our eBay store. Thank you so much. Now, we can't forget Who North America. Uh, they opened the same year as Bundles from Britain, 1984, and you can find them at www.whona.com. And, of course, they are the sponsors behind Doctoberfest, which I'll talk about in a moment. And I want to include our good friends at the Who Shop in London. I had to make a call there uh, the other day. It was really, uh, really quite nice when I called up and I said, Hi, it's uh, me, Larry Van Mersbergen from the United States calling. And immediately the person's like, Of course, I know who you are. We listen to your podcast. So I was moved. Thank you for listening. A shout out to my friends at The Who Shop. TheWhoShop.com is where you need to go. Uh, you can pre-order the next and greatest issue of Doctor Who magazine. Um, I have some items en route from them, so I look forward to getting those when they get here. So there you go. Of course, on our website at DoctorWhoCollectors.com, in addition to the uh, merchandise links, and all our podcasts, of course, are posted there from episode one all the way to the present day. Uh, we have the complete guide to Doctor Who classic hardcover books. Uh, we list all the reprints. We list the uh, American editions, the uh, White Lion editions, the Frederick Muller editions. Those are all included in that classic um, hardcover, and they're in publication order as best as we can determine from several sources. There are some sources that tell me that I could be off on a few things, but... I've, if I've got two sources or that say the same thing versus a third that says something else, I tend to go with the the two. So I'm trying to keep it as accurate as possible. Uh, we we've been helped out by a great resource by Paul Smith, uh, and we've been helping him out as well. So there you go. All right, what's coming up here? Doctoberfest 2023. I told you I'd get back to that very exciting event this year. It's a one day festival uh, in Indianapolis, and um, I am very excited because I am a guest, but I am not the headliner. I thought uh, maybe I would be, but no, and I'm not the headliner. But I will be joined by the great and wonderful Sophie Aldred. Uh, of course, if you don't know who that is, you need to find a new podcast. I'm just kidding. If you don't remember who she was, she played Ace in the classic series and in 
the last episode of Jodie Whittaker. So it was uh, really nice to see her. Of course, I saw her at Chicago TARDIS, and I didn't really get a chance too much to talk to her, but I did talk to her in the last couple months about our, our appearing together. So it should be fun. The Collector and the Companion, although that's not what it's called. That's what I'm calling it. Uh, you will get to also see um, most of my Who Room in a dedicated space. Uh, we, we actually had it in a shared space last year with the main uh, convention, but we're going to be in our own room um, with, of course, my good friend uh, Elwithis Pagan with his props and autographs, uh, so you can see it up close. Um, so, by the way, dedicated room. Are you listening, Chicago TARDIS? Uh, Saturday, October 21st, um, sponsored by Who North America at the Courtyard by Marriott Indianapolis Plainfield. Visit the um, Who North America website. That's Who N A. Uh, dot com and uh, you can find out more about that uh, they have a special code for discount hotel rooms and uh, you mo don't want to miss that event especially meet sophie aldred there you go and of course uh chicago tardis 2023 set for the next thanksgiving weekend in november join us for the 60th anniversary of doctor who with the best convention in the midwest for more information of course go to chicagotardis.com so our guests here we've got some updates um the first guests announced of course were jason hay gallery great guy ceo big finish i intend to have him sign my cassette copy of sirens of time i've been talking about it for years i'm finally gonna bring it down uh every convention almost every convention comes with Fraser Hines. He's not coming with Oktoberfest as of yet. That that could change. Um, and of course, Michael Troughton, who uh, is the son of Patrick Troughton. He was on the schedule last year, but uh, couldn't make it. And right now we've got Dr. Number 5, Peter Davison. And I'm especially excited because I do the Dr. 5 cosplay. And I'm looking forward to get a photo with uh, Mr. Davison. He's a great man. I've talked to him in the past. Just a really wonderful guy. Um, and uh, love seeing him. So there you go. Uh, hotel room reservations are live, so you don't want to miss it. So again, at chicagotardis.com. Uh, um, and again, and down the road here, I've been confirmed uh, to do my collecting uh, showcase at the Twin Cities console room in 2024. And of course, I'm, I'm pretty much, I think I'm not going to be going to Galley 1 next year. The, the cost is just way too high. I mean, I realize you get all those wonderful um, guests and all that. I mean, they're paying huge money to get David Tennant and you know, and Jody Whitaker and that, that's a lot of money, uh, to, to bring those people out because they're super popular and all that. And that's what they demand. It's a, it's a shame that they ask so much, but you know what? They deserve it. They've earned it. I think David Tennant, I think he's, he's a great man. I would love to meet him one day, but not this year. So there you go. Uh, watch the space for, uh, for possible, uh, information on other items too. I've also uh, inquired at C2E2 in Chicago and uh, they couldn't fit me in last year, but they're going to see about put me in this year. What's new to the collection? Okay, two radio controlled Daleks. I've got a classic Dalek and a movie Dalek. Those will both be on display at Oktoberfest. I got a copy of The Ultimate Foe in hardcover, mint condition. A copy of The Brain of Morbius, first edition. Still no luck on that second edition. In X library condition, but in really good shape. Um, and also a copy of The Amazing World of Doctor Who on vinyl and CD. Um, I'm hoping to get a second copy of the vinyl and CD so I can open them up and, and take a listen. That completes basically my entire collection of the Typhoon T uh, uh, set. I've got the book, the poster, all the cards, the vinyl, and the and the, uh, <laughs> and the uh, CD. So there you go. I uh, also got a copy of the first edition of the annual years by Paul Majors. Uh, thanks to Gene Smith for finding that for me. And a flight control TARDIS uh, has arrived in the, uh, it's a slightly, a slightly crushed box, but that's okay. The item is still good. And drum roll, please. I've got a really, uh, I'm very excited about this, uh, this last item I'm going to talk about here, but uh, you may have seen it on my Instagram feed already, but I have one of the first copies of the first Target book ever printed. That's Doctor Who and the Daleks in near mint condition. And here's the thing. It comes from the personal collection of the late Chris Achilleos. I was very moved. Um, I got it by way of Tasha Achilleos. Uh, she also sent some postcards and a magnet, which was just really amazing. And she included a signed note telling me that it came from Chris's collection. And 
typically um, when a book is, is off the presses, the first few out of the box go to the author, the editor, and the uh, artist. So this could be one of the first three books taken out of the, of, of the packet. So I'm very excited about that. I will have that on display at Doctoberfest as well, and probably at Chicago TARDIS if I do the same uh, show that I usually do there. It might actually be one of the rarest or honest, you know, one of the rarest things I own, uh, other than the Web of Fear Target hardcover, which only seven were made. So that might be the other one. So that's all for now. Stay tuned for more updates to that. Um, of course, out there in the collecting world, when you talk about classic hardcovers, which we do on this program a lot, there are many rumors abound about second printings or third printings um, by Wingate or W.H. Allen. Of course, I'm always on the lookout for concrete proof. So if you have a third printing that is not the Loch Ness Monster, because we know that one exists, because I've got one on my shelf. Um, it's the first and second editions I can't find. I know, go figure. Uh, but if you find something, you know, there's always been there's been talk about a Space War third edition, but I can't see that actually happening. But if you have proof, in other words, a, a photo of the spine and cover and the copyright page where it says third impression or reprinted and a date, that would be very helpful, especially uh, Brain of Morbius uh, reprinted in 78 or 79. That would be nice to find. Uh, please contact me at Doctor Who Collectors Podcast at gmail.com. Um, I also love talking with collectors. If you'd like to be on the program, I have no problem with that. Just uh, shoot me an email and we'll get you on the schedule. Uh, if you're a UK listener, uh, I do I do my uh, interviews on weekends in the morning so that it's in the afternoon by you. But in a few weeks, uh, I'll be uh, off for a while so we can do them anytime. Of course, anybody in the United States, you know, we can handle you there. We're more than happy to have you on the show. On today's show, I'm going to be talking about these elusive books that I referred to on some of our hardcover episodes, and that's the Aeonian and Ameronian books. So you say Aeonian, I say Ameronian, and let's call the whole thing off. There we go. Um, these books were published in the United States. I have all five of them in the collection. Um, not easy to do. But I do have it, uh, and so we'll talk about that in just a few moments. Uh, Feedspot, of course, has us ranked at 35 of the top 90 Doctor Who podcasts for all for this time in 2023. So thank you for your support, um, and uh, we're just pleased as punch for that. I want to thank our patrons as well. If you're supporting us, or if you're not yet supporting us on Patreon, we we do offer uh, video interviews there, especially if you want to see the interview with uh, Tim Traylor or. Peter Purvis, for that matter, or any of the videos that I do that are special for, for those uh, listeners or any requests that you do, of course, um, you know, you want to see what's on it, you know, see what's on it, you know, looking at one of the videos and say, hey, what's on that shelf behind you or what's the, to the right of you or what's there? I'd be more than happy to do that for you. So go to patreon.com backslash Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. If you support us at the $15 level of or above, you get access to all of those special episodes. Any amount below that, of course, you get one day advanced copies of this podcast. Uh, so you can get a jump on your friends and know all the info before they do, which is kind of a good thing. So there you go. You can also support us at our Podbean, and we are Podbean Podcast, drcollectors.podbean.com. Click the support a patron button to support us at any level. Our theme song is Who's Doctor Who, composed by Barry Mason and Les Reed, performed by the great Fraser Hines. Want to share this podcast with the world and your friends? You can hear this podcast just about anywhere you get your podcasts except for Spotify. But of course, you can also find this podcast and many other great Doctor Who podcasts at directionpoint.org. And now it's time for my time. My time is a chance to talk about anything I want to, because it's my podcast. Um, I recently had some issues uh, with uh, price gouging revisited once again, and it's, it's really sad because uh, you'll see uh, pe people in England that are not necessarily Doctor Who fans, but they realize that, hey, somebody said, hey, I can make some big bucks on these on these books. So they, they go trolling around to library sales. And let's say you pick up a, a pretty beat up library edition of An Unearthly Child. It's still got the pocket glued in. It's got the plastic wrap around it taped to the book. And you pay basically a, a 50 cents or a dollar for it from the library. And you're going to turn it around for $600 online. I think that's a bit crazy. I mean, 
I would say maybe 50 pounds would be reasonable, uh, for, you know, because you paid a pound for it. You know, there you go. You, you made 50 times your investment, but 600 times your investment. That seems a bit crazy. I mean, and also it's just it's just a, a real hard thing for us here in America, because in the United States, I can't go to a library sale and find a hardcover book because most of the hardcover books in the United States were in my store and bundles from Britain back in 85. Uh, we didn't have a lot of libraries that picked them up. In fact, many libraries did not want them um, here in this country. So that's why Lyle Stewart um, in America sold them to me. So it was really quite something, you know, when I see those things, I see groups of hardcovers online. Uh, recently, there was an eBay auction where um, they had five or six books all stacked up in a photo and it was like 4,000 pounds. But the idea was you're supposed to contact them with an offer for a particular book. Well, I made a reasonable offer for a second printing of Dalek Invasion of Earth. In fact, I followed the price guide and he kept coming back with something a little bit too high. And I said, well, that's beyond the value uh, of the book. And he said he would get back to me on the postage and never did. So it's it's like, forget it. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe you're willing to put out $500 for a beat up copy of, 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 of that or Face of Evil or something like that. It's like, no, it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. And until as collectors and as buyers, we stop doing it. We stop paying $2,600 for Planet of the Daleks or $800 for Wheel in Space. By the way, the, the hardcover Wheel in Space was not short on supply. There was no warehouse fire from what I understand, but still the paperbacks are going for 80 bucks. It's just ridiculous. So there you go. It's it's just a matter of common sense. You know, um, if I find a book at a library and pay a dollar and I'm done reading it, I'll put it on eBay for $2, maybe three plus shipping. I'm not going to try to get $600 out of it. It's just not that, the, you know, don't try to run the market. The market will take care of itself. Now, I'll have the, the naysayers out there saying the seller is allowed to put the book at any price he wants to. Well, that's absolutely true. However, as a buyer, I don't have to buy it. And I think more buyers need to say, no, we're not going to do that. I mean, yeah, I want that book, but I'm not going to give up three paychecks for it. That's just ridiculous. And it's just not worth it. You know, every once in a while, um, you know, uh, Alien Entertainment gets, uh, he buys collections a lot and has a lot of hardcover books and he puts them on and he tries to keep them close to eBay. But of course, if eBay is really high, so are those going to, those are going to be high as well, unless he's got a bunch of them and then he puts them down a little lower. But, you know, that's the point. eBay is the driving force of our lives, it seems, for, for Doctor Who books. And it shouldn't be. Uh, I'm trying to find a copy of the Makra Terror in a hardcover. It's supposed to be relatively uh, later in that, and I've seen a bunch of other ones, but that one has escaped me. I found one copy for $385, Ex Library, and I said, "That's cr excuse me, that's crazy. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. Um, it's just not worth it." So, I mean, when I put a book up for sale, I try to keep the price relatively reasonable. You know, I might even take an offer or two, but I'm not trying to gouge the market or drive the market. Uh, and beware of eBay fraud, too, because I, I just uh, had an issue with a seller who tried to sell me an anniversary figurine set, which I was really hoping to get for the for the next uh, convention. But it um, and it also include a, uh, included a novelization of City of Death, I think, by Paul Schoons, a uh, good friend, uh, Paul. And I thought, OK, so I, I paid for everything and then they said they shipped it. Well, there was no tracking number. The guy said he sent me a receipt for the shipping and then nothing arrived after two months. So, of course, eBay refunded my money and the person was really upset on the other side saying, hey, you got you got your money back. And I'm like, yeah, because I didn't get anything. <laughs> and I don't believe you sent it. So, I mean, every time um, I don't get it, if I don't get a tracking number, I get I get a little suspicious because I've gotten global shipping emails from them. And so I'm like, yep, I can track that. I can track this. I can track that. So that makes a total of three packages in 30 years that have been lost. Um, and that's uh, some, sometimes packages get lost in, in other ways, too. I mean, I had um, I have a, a package coming from the Who shop in London and apparently got all the way over here. 
they tried to deliver it on a Sunday, which, by the way, my, my po, the P.O. box is closed on Sunday. So they know that um, where I'm at here. It's a private P.O. box, not a U.S. one. But in any case, um, they brought it back to the thing and they put it on the wrong shelf. So it got sent back to England. So I had to, I had to pay for shipping again. But I'm hoping this time around it'll get to me. Um, but that's, uh, you know, that, that happens every once in a while. Or Andrew Skilleter. Great Andrew Skeletor, he's a listener, uh, sent me Illuminart, and it got as far as Canada, and the label fell off, but they had the return label, so they were able to get it back to him. So he sent me an email saying, you know, good news and bad news. The good news is your package has arrived. The bad news is it's here. <laughs> <laughs> all the way where he is. So there you go. Um, and again, like I said, uh, it's still, but let the buyer beware, you know, and by the way, you can report a seller. Um, sellers can block buyers. I don't understand why you can't block sellers. That's just, uh, it doesn't seem right, but the seller runs the, runs the shop apparently because they pay all the fees. So that's how it goes. But anyway, good luck out there. And after the break, I've got uh, the main story here. We're going to talk about Aeonian and Amaronian books and, of course, the most outrageous offer. Stay tuned. Are you ready to travel through time with us? Then check out Traveling the Vortex, a Doctor Who podcast. For nearly seven years and more than 500 episodes, we've traveled from one end of the Vortex to the other, making different stops with different doctors, reviewing everything from TV stories to audio plays, from books to comics, and more. Sean, Keith, and Glenn take you on a journey through 50-plus years of Doctor Who episodes and spinoff materials. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts, so be sure to check us out. And now, we're a proud member of Direction Point, a Doctor Who podcast network. You're listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. Keep collecting! We are going on a journey, a very long journey, through the world of the Target novelizations and publication order. Every week, we are looking at a new book, talking about Terrace Dix, Malcolm Hulk, and all our Doctor Who novelization friends. Whatever you do, keep turning the pages. This is Jason Miller of the Doctor Who Literature Podcast, a member of the Direction Point Podcast Network, and you are listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. Keep collecting. Hi, I'm Juliet. And I'm Nathan. Experience Doctor Who from the very beginning through a classic fan's eyes. And through the eyes of a new Who fan. Reminisce and relive those classic moments with Nathan as he offers fun insight. Or experience them for the first time with Juliet as she dwells on social issues, history, fashion, and the size of a flashlight. We're the Time Streams Podcast. Find us on Spotify, Stitcher, or Apple Podcasts. You're listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. Keep collecting. Up there is the scanner. Those are the doors. That is a chair with a panda on it. Sheer poetry, dear boy. And now it's time for the main story on the Doctor Who Collectors podcast. Today, I thought I would uh, spend a little uh, time with these mysterious hardcover books um, published by Aeonian slash Amor... Uh, let's see if I can pronounce this correctly here. Amorian. Amorian or Aeonian. Uh, and they were published in the United States. So they are actually one of the best kept secrets in the Doctor Who collecting world because they came out in the late 70s and in the early 80s. And myself, even included as a dealer in the mid 80s, had no clue that these books existed. I mean, there was obviously no Google back then, so we couldn't figure out what was published. But I never saw one of these in a bookstore. I never saw one of these um, in a, you know, anywhere where I thought, you know, we could figure out how to get a hold of them. Uh, and we were pretty, you know, on the detective path back then, trying to find out, you know, about things that, you know, we could get and could sell. So this really was quite something. So uh, my heavy source here for this podcast is, of course, the great book, Red, White, and Who, the Story of Doctor Who in America. I had a, a conversation with uh, Stephen Warren Hill, one of the uh, uh, authors of this book, who actually spoke with the owner of Aeonian Publishing and got quite a bit of information. So I'm going to share some of that information with you uh, as far as how this came about and 
why these books uh, exist for the most part. And there are a lot of unanswered questions as well. So I'm hoping that maybe some comments on this podcast will say, hey, yeah, I know something about that, or I worked for the company, or I did this. And, you know, that might, um, you know, it might be a little bit, um, we might get more information than what uh, the authors here could because of you know, we're a little bit fast forward in the future here. We've got a better, a better ways to go. Now, I have been including these books in my regular coverage of hardcover um, books because I consider these to be classic hardcovers uh, because they, they, while they were not published by W. H. Allen or Alan Wingate, uh, these are books that were published in hardcover edition uh, in the United States using the Target book. Um, uh, target books themselves, actually, they were, you know, I'll explain how that worked in just a moment. But uh, that's, that's, you know, one of the th reasons here we got is, and also all of these books say that they're limited, uh, which I'm going to give with a grain of salt, because we really have no idea how many of these books existed. And also with the fact that some of these books had only 80 copies or 300 copies, I haven't seen a price increase on them when they come out. Uh, usually when a seller puts them up there, they're usually about $28, $30. Not not too not too uh, expensive as some of the, you know, um, you know, I'm tracking a, a sale on on uh, a hardcover edition to the Macra Terror, which is almost all, already at $400, which seems crazy to me because that's a newer book. And there are plenty of those out there. But you know, that's a that's another rant for another time. But anyway, um, the the Aeonian Press from Matatech, New York. Um, now, according to Red, White, and Who, it says around 1979. According to Chris Stone in the unofficial Doctor Who guide, Day of the Daleks was the first book printed in January 1978. That could also be possible. That's the date we give on our website. I think we're going to update it to say possibly 79, possibly 80. We don't know. We honestly, there are no dates inside these books to give us any kind of clue as to, you know, when they were published. The copyright date, of course, is the original story copyright, so that doesn't help us with the with the publication. We do know that these are legitimate publications, that licenses were obtained, um, and even one book was announced but never finished. So sounds familiar. W.H. Allen did the same thing with Attack of the Cybermen in 1986. Uh, yeah, they opened it up for pre-order and bundles from Britain ordered, I think we pre-ordered 100 copies of Attack of the Cybermen in hardcover. Never came out. So there you go. Um, anyway, this this little uh, publisher, it's a reprint publisher. Aeonian Press, actually, if you do your uh, do a little bit of research, it actually dates back to the 1800s, but it might have been a different publishing house with the same name. It's hard to tell because the Library Association just has everything under that title. Um, they did two limited edition hardcovers, either in 78, 79, or early 1980, uh, Day of the Daleks and the Giant Robot. Both copies limited to 300 uh, each, and um, many references uh, mention the fact that, you know, there are some resources that have the Giant Robot as existing, but not Day of the Daleks, and vice versa. So... There, there you go. Um, in fact, these books were so not well known that up to a few years ago, because I bought Day of the Daleks from Amazon for $19.99 several years ago. I, I, I was curious about it, so I, I picked it up. And uh, then I found this whole, I read this whole section here in Red, White, and Who, and I thought, well, let me see if I could find some more. So I found Giant Robot, but that's the only two I was able to find. Uh, I was also able to find Image of the Fendall, and then um, to my very good friend, Stephen Warren Hill, who sold me his remaining copies of the other three that I was missing. So that was really, really nice to get the whole set. So I have the whole set of books. Anyhow, um, the Aeonian printing of Day of the Daleks, and I'm going to start with that one, has the logo that was created for Pinnacle Books, which is close to the same time, roughly 1978, 79. I mean, I'm not sure how they licensed it, if they got it from them or what, but Pinnacle created the logo and gave it to Aeonian Press, or, or they bought it or whatever. We don't know. Anyway, that also led to the rumor that these were Pinnacle hardcovers. Even though the word, you know, the pinnacle does not 
you know, they did not do any hardcovers. I have that in absolute proof from Kensington Books that owns Pinnacle. They said we did not publish any cloth bound editions of any books. They were a paperback uh place so um the of course if a library you know hardbound a, a pinnacle book and people were arguing with me that's a hardcover i said well no it's not it's a, it's a paperback of somebody rebound uh, and that's essentially what these are too you know this is um this is a, a paperback book that was rebound at a different size and reprinted and all that it's actually a little bit larger than the wh allen um books uh the the book the book measures at nine inches by by six so it's a little bit larger it does not fit the standard um hardcover books bags that we recommend so it's in a comic book bag which is about right um and so there you go it was um you know a blue cloth blue cloth bound pinnacle uh, logo and spine color in gold and 300 copies um printed for this one so there you go that's uh, and that I'm, I'm keeping the date at january 78 because that's the only printed um resource i have that has that date maybe it's later uh if you have information that i can correct with uh let me know contact us at doctor who collectors podcast at gmail.com so that uh that was day of the daleks and uh of course it's the same as the as the target book and so giant robot is the next one and that one came out, according to Chris Stone, it came out in June of 1980. And it's still available. Um, I have a copy that's still in the shrink wrap. A little bit different, though. The, the uh, Pinnacle logo does not appear on the spine. It's in gold. It's a uh, maroon uh, cloth bound. The thing is about these books is that they don't even have the same size or shape. Um, Giant Robot and Day of the Daleks are the exact same size, but future editions are slightly larger, slightly smaller. There is no consistency whatsoever. Um, embossing is different. Printing is different. I'm not sure what was going on there. Um, and none of the books have year of publication, as I mentioned before. Uh, now, Red, White & Who actually talked with the owner, and they couldn't help either. And they actually reached out to the uh, Amory Inn book. Uh, book company who had not responded to their uh, request for information. So um, basically, I guess what was happened with uh, the way that these books were created was uh, they used a photocopying of the Target edition of this book, which uh, included, and I'm, and I'm quoting here directly from Red, White, and Who. So, um, to, you know, they used two plates at a time with four pages spread out on a large uh, sheet, and then another machine folds them twice and creating a 16 page signature and then you know that kind of it's kind of you know yeah big deal they are high quality books um they are their reprints are well known and a lot of their book titles go back to you know journey at the center of the earth and things like that so um so there you go so that's that's the second book now the next book uh is doctor who in the android invasion and um that one it says here uh, according to my guide here, June of 84 or possibly 83, there's no evidence to tell, tell us what's going on. Well, this one differs from the other two because on the actual cover, it's got the pinnacle logo, Doctor Who and the Android Invasion, Terrence Dix. On the side, the the um, it's in a different font. It's it's very large and easy to read. And this one has the Amorian um, logo and not the Aeonian. So it's, it's really quite something. Not connected to Pinnacle at all, as far as this is not part of that same company at all. Uh, says it's limited to 80 copies. I take that with a big pinch of salt. We don't know if it was limited to 80 copies. It could have been 800 copies. All I know is that the book's still floating around. Um, my copy is in the shrink wrap. It has a barcode on the back. And uh, it does not fit a standard book uh, book bag in fact it is it is slightly smaller than day of the daleks and giant robot but it's actually i think yeah it's a little smaller and this one's on a red cloth with kind of a looks like a gold emboss on red so that's you know that's the android invasion there and and so that that was the next copy that they did you know really interesting here uh it's got an isbn number 
Uh, the ISBN uh, information can be found uh, online, of course. I've got that on the DoctorWhoCollectors.com backslash hardcover guide. So that was that a book. The next book, I believe here, is uh, Revenge of the Cybermen. And uh, that one here, according to my information, January of 1986, and that is confirmed in Red, White, and Who, so that one must have some, um, some information there. Uh, and also limited to 80 copies, this one on purple bound with gold. And again, on the front cover, a slightly different um, pinnacle logo with the Revenge of the Cybermen in gold. Uh, I will take some pictures and I will post these on our podcast website for this episode so you can see what these books kind of look like. This one is still in the shrink wrap, so I'm not breaking the seal on that. It has the uh, sticker and barcode on the back and uh, no logo on the spine and no publisher logo on the sign either, but we've got it as Aeonian. So that's, uh, that's according to that. Um, we don't know if it was limited to 80 copies. No idea. No idea. We know that the, the uh, W.H. Allen hardcover of Revenge of the Cybermen goes for big bucks. I have no clue. Um, and I've, I've only seen this copy I got as part of a set that I got from uh, Mr. Mr. Warren Hill. So uh, I don't know uh, how many of these are floating around. Uh, so there we go. And that, that takes us to... Um, a copy of the Loch Ness Monster. And that, according to my guide, was released in June of 86. And Red, White, and Who confirms 1986. This one limited to 40 copies. Now, it's completely different, and it's a little smaller than previous editions. In fact, uh, yeah, Revenge of the Cybermen was the same size as Android Invasion, but this book is a little smaller and a little fatter on green cloth bound with gold emboss with a different font entirely. And this one has the Amarian uh, publisher logo on the side. So according to information here, limited to 40 copies, possibly more, we don't know. Uh, we don't even know what the price was. Uh, by the way, none of these, we have no idea what they sold for. Um, I'm, I'm not sure at all. We can't even put a guess on it. And Red, White and Who does not address that. So it's, it's really quite uh, quite something. Uh, so there you go. So there's uh, Loch Ness Monster I have seen uh, floating around. So y you might be able to pick up a copy for that. And, um, and then the next one is a copy I got uh, recently, Image of the Fendal, uh, which also has a June of 86 date here. And according to this, it's, uh, you know, um, they, uh, Red, White, and Who has this one before, um, Loch Ness, but it looks like it may have come out at the same time. Also, a different set of embossing on the front. Uh, it's it's really quite something how inconsistently consistent these books are printed. Um, and according to this, uh, let's see, this the the side uh, the the binding here has a different font, but no publisher imprint on here. So I'm you know I've got it listed as Aeonian, limited to fifty copies. Loch Ness was limited to 40 copies. Um, we don't know. Um, I've, I've got a value on Image of the Fendal at $165 because that's what I've seen it uh, kind of sell for in the last few years that might be changing or, or the fact that maybe there really were only 50 copies. All right. Lastly, lastly but not leastly, in the front pages of Image of the Fendal, which I did not verify because mine is still in the shrink wrap, but Red, White, and Who went ahead and opened the shrink wrap on some of these uh, and looked here and says, according to them, uh, they listed as also available Doctor Who and the Genesis of the Daleks. No physical evidence that it was ever published. I don't even list it on the hardcover guide because my guess is it never got printed. Uh, and, you know, in 86, okay, this is possible that, you know, of course, Doctor Who books were, were pretty plentiful in 1986. We had a pretty good run with hardcovers, paperbacks, and whatnot, and the series was still pretty popular, uh, even though uh, there was a lot of tension going on at the BBC and with Colin Baker and with all that, um, that the stuff was still selling. So it's possibly that the license was revoked, or... Uh, in this case, Genesis of the Daleks, which is a Terry Nation story, uh, the Terry Nation uh, folks may not have approved a reprint, even though they did approve 
the Pinnacle edition. There was a Pinnacle book of that. It was uh, it was done a lot earlier than '86, though. So, um, so there you go. That's that's this whole uh, you know you say Aeonian, I say Amorian, um, you know, and that's uh, you know let's all let's call the whole thing off. So these are legitimate books. These are, these are reprints of targets that were done in hardcover for the U.S. market, but they didn't really market them pretty well. Um, so they, they, according to the uh, owner of the company, uh, we operated with multiple small runs and uh, that uh, the random selection of titles available was down to um, basically the owner not having time to get in, familiar with Doctor Who. Uh, he didn't have any Doctor Who expertise, and um, and so you know basically, you know he put out uh, according to this he put out sixteen thousand titles in fifty two years, and he dealt with uh, cancer and things like that. So I, I don't even know if he's still living. So if if he is, uh, well power to you. But um, that was definitely um, a really odd piece of Doctor Who collecting history. And I know these books are sought after by British and Australian collectors because they never got to their shores. Uh, it's kind of like the uh, the American collectors that are really after the W.H. Allen books that didn't get U.S. distribution. We had a bunch of books that were here um, in the 80s, uh, in fact, 85, 86, because I was the distributor for most of those books in, uh, in, in America. And so a lot of these non-library copies of hardcovers that are floating around America from American sellers came originally from my shop which because I was the only one that had them uh, occasionally after after Lyle Stewart decided not to bring in hardcovers some of the bookstores like uh, Barnes and Noble and Borders and maybe I don't know if Borders was around so please pardon that I don't know if they were around yet but apparently um, like copies of the smugglers appeared in some bookstores uh, the hardcover edition that was only a thousand printed so there are a few of those floating around the united states because they were bought here and a lot of times they would have lyle stewart you know price tags but they, those were put on at the wh allen warehouse the ones that were destined for the united states even though you know lyle stewart wasn't handling them anymore so there we go um so i'm i'm still you know i've got a lot of questions about these and what red white and who has basically four pages so if you want to read about this here get a copy of red white and who it begins on page 281 and takes you all the way to 284 and then it goes into the pinnacle uh story and things like that and we've we've covered the pinnacle books pretty carefully here and then you know, but this book, of course, deals with um, stuff that was created in the United States, which is really quite cool because there were quite a few things. You know, the the um, the Dalek book from 1967, uh, basically the the Avon book was created here in the United States. It didn't sell very well. Um, allegedly, there was a hardcover book to that one. We don't know for sure. Uh, it was. It says only in mass market paperback. Uh, had a had a cover price of fifty cents which uh, today would be about four bucks or so. So uh, it's really interesting uh, how, how that book, you know, that books in the United States didn't do well. And I kind of wonder if it was lack of marketing, lack of expertise, especially in 67, you know, when those books came out, um, you know, when that book came out or any of these, um, these uh, Aeonian, Emerian uh, books that came out in the uh, 70s and 80s. Uh, they didn't do any marketing to Doctor Who people. They didn't put out any kind of wholesale notices because I got a lot of those notices, you know, from like Barbara Elder Company and, you know, uh, Glenwood distributors in Chicago, you know, would always say, hey, we got some new Doctor Who items. We're getting, you know, Doctor Who Monthly. We're getting this magazine. We're getting these these items that we can get a limited edition of these books from from these publishers and whatnot. And so that was it was always very, very, you know, paper, you know, was the way to go back in the 80s because we didn't have email. There was no uh, tech. Nobody had cell phones. Uh, it, it was really quite something. But I never heard of this publisher when I had the store. And it was really quite something that we could not, you know, take advantage of this because I would have definitely ordered um, I would have ordered 40 to 50 copies of these to take to conventions and say, you know, USA Doctor Who books. And nobody would have seen them and I probably would have sold. 
but it's a shame. It's kind of a lost opportunity on on the uh, on the publisher. And but uh, as far as collectors go, uh, that means that there are quite a few of these books floating around, and sometimes they come out new because somebody either bought them or had them in stock or had them at their place. And there are sellers on eBay that are cleaning out old bookstore stock, and occasionally you get lucky with a with a group of books that include these wonderful uh, hardcover books. So if, you have, if you'd like more information, I don't know how much more I can give you, or if you have information that could help me out, Give us a contact at Doctor Who Collectors Podcast at gmail.com. And I would check Amazon UK, Amazon.com, and check other Amazon sites. By the way, your Amazon logo works on all Amazon sites. Check eBay or Abe's Books. And I've got a few people out there that, that look around for me and every once in a while find one of these. And of course, uh, I would also definitely, while you're out there looking for books, pick up a copy of Red, White, and Who, the story of Doctor Who in America. Uh, and it is one of my favorite books. And it's written by people that I know very well. Uh, Stephen Warren Hill, uh, Nick Seidler, the late Jennifer Adams Kelly, Robert Warnock, John Lavallee, and Janine Fennick. So, uh, Wonderful, wonderful book. You can still get it from ATB Publishing. Uh, my copy is signed by most of the authors. So it's, it's really quite something. I, I use this book is more of a reference book. It's well, the binding is well broken and read because I, I use this book quite a bit. So I definitely recommend all collectors have a copy of that if you're looking at American collectibles. So um, that wraps up our main story for today, Aeonian versus Amorian versus the world. So uh, I don't know what the score is, but we've got five hardcover books that uh, you should add to your collections as soon as possible. Anyway, stay tuned. After these wonderful words from our Direction Point podcast, we will come up back with the most outrageous offer. Hello, fellow time travelers, and welcome to the Doctor Who Target Book Club podcast, the only podcast to discuss, in story order, all the Doctor Who novelizations. My name is Tony Whip. And every two weeks or so, I'm joined by a two- to three-person discussion panel, including our so-called expert who's been a Who fan since 1979. That would be me. We also get the views of intermediate, casual, and novice fans who either have never seen the show or who have never read these books until these podcasts, including... Dalton Hughes. And... Alison Fitzsafried. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you find good podcasts, or even ones like ours. You're listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast on the Direction Point Podcast Network. Keep collecting! Hi, I'm Rupert Booth. I am known as Paul Ferry. And my name is Barry Williams. Together, we host Time Ram. Time Ram's a cruel mistress. It's a random number generator. That also. We roll a number from 1 to 30, and that's our doctor. Then 1 to 300 for the story, and then we ram them together. Even if it doesn't make sense. Cruel, I tell you. Time round. Putting the wrong doctors in the wrong stories, so you don't have to. You're listening to the Doctor Who Collectors Podcast. You are invited on an adventure across all of time and space, in a completely random order. It's the Police Box in the Junkyard podcast. Jump in the TARDIS with your hosts, Eric Goldbranson, Asad Cheshki, and Matthew Kressel. Explore Doctor Who TV stories, audio adventures, and books, both novels and non-fiction. The Police Box in the Junkyard podcast. It's the entire Hooniverse. On Shuffle. The Police Box in the Junkyard podcast is a member of the Direction Point Network and is available about once a month wherever you find your podcasts. You are listening to the Doctor Who Collectors podcast. Keep collecting. The vervoids are probably the best dirty joke in Doctor Who. They're hermaphroditic plants. A lot of plants are. So there you go. That's it's based on science. No, they'll ship anything. There are probably eleven and handle shippers out there. You just have to drill a hole where his mouth is, and you're all set. You know he needs the room. I've seen it in pictures. I'm not saying you're not a fan. I'm saying you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Doctor Who gives a a drunken Doctor Who podcast for the end times. All my travelings throughout the universe, I have battled against evil. 
against power mad conspirators. I should have stayed here. The oldest civilization. Decadent, degenerate, and rotten to the core. Power mad conspirators, Daleks, Sontarans, Cybermen. They're still in the nursery compared to us. Ten million years of absolute power. That's what it takes to be really corrupt. And now it's time for the most outrageous offer. This most outrageous offer, of course, is a Doctor Who item or Doctor Who related item that appears to be priced way beyond where it should be. And for that reason, we do research to find out, can I get it cheaper? Or, you know, for that matter, is is it the only one out there? So a lot of times, uh, sometimes I get these in the email and I'll look and I'll go, you know what, that's the only one out there. So right now that's the price. I may not agree with it, but that's the way it goes. But here uh, we have an item and this is an eBay uh, thing here, uh, silver slash acre uh, with a lot of uh, reviews, 100% positive feedback. Um, And this is, of course, from the United Kingdom. Uh, so what we're talking about here is Doctor Who monthly, sorry, Doctor Who weekly, excuse me, number 20 from 1980. Uh, the Dalek Slayer, um, Doc, this week the Doctor Becomes a Living Bomb, has a picture of Daleks on the front cover, uh, comic strips, features, pinups, that kind of thing. It's a Doctor Who weekly magazine. You know, they ran for about 43 issues uh, from 79 to 1980. And um, I've got all of these, including this issue. And uh, it says here that uh, the item does not contain free gifts or inserts. It's in very good condition. Uh, let's see, shipping to the United States would be about 10 bucks uh, for that. And uh, huh. the buy it now price in British pounds is 7899 uh, The approximate U.S. equivalent to $9,824.38. I was like... Okay, this is most likely an error. Maybe they meant to make it seven pound eighty nine. I don't know. We tried to contact the seller. The seller would not accept our message, so that was not possible. Um, I I'm going to call this completely. I'm going to say I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they made a mistake. Now I found I got this um, sent to me about a month ago, so I'm recording a month later, and it's still up there. So obviously somebody, you know, it hasn't been viewed. It's not, you know, I've, it is on my official watch list. It's a seller I have purchased from before. So I know, I know they're pretty, you know, reliable as far as that goes. I don't think I've gotten any issues with this guy, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's really quite, uh, amazing to me. Now, if you really, we need to get a copy of Dr. Who number 20, uh, I found another seller uh, slightly lesser price here. Uh, this is uh, from, uh, let's see, this is, uh, let's see, where is it from here? It's from the United States. So uh, this is $34.88. Uh, it doesn't say uh, what the condition is, uh, all that stuff, uh, put in sleeve with cardboard, you know, that kind of thing. But you can also, I found another seller here that has it for $4.99, which is about right for this for this magazine. So it's, um, this is uh, from the United States. Uh, you'll pay about five bucks shipping and that's, you know, from Boston. So that doesn't really, uh, you know, if you do a search on this Doctor Who Weekly number 20, you will find it for less than $9,000. Uh, which is crazy. That's uh, that's just ridiculous. Not exactly. Uh, <laughs> I would call that a most outrageous mistake, <laughs> probably. But uh, I do have a copy of this magazine, so I'm definitely not going to get ten grand for it. That's that's not happening. But anyway, keep these coming. By the way, if you find a, an item that looks a little ridiculous in price, send it to Doctor Who Collectors Podcast Gmail dot com in the subject area "Most Outrageous Offer." Or you can find us on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram and just send us a, send us a message there with the same kind of title. You know, check this out, you know, or maybe take a look at this or, wow, I found this and I can't believe it's real. That kind of thing. So that's that's how we work there. And, of course, that wraps up the Doctor Who Collectors podcast. But before we go, I have some announcements to make. We have another late-breaking news on Chicago TARDIS. This is not an official release from Chicago TARDIS. This is from the artists themselves. And you know what? With the 60th anniversary coming up, 
Let's go, Chicago TARDIS. You know, you're kind of you're kind of holding back on some of these guest announcements, um, but I can I can say uh, Colin Spall. And Tony Lee will be at Chicago TARDIS, my good friend Tony. Uh, Tony, of course, wants to be on the podcast. He's a listener, so a shout out to my good friend out there. We're looking forward to seeing you in Chicago. Uh, Colin Spall and I are Facebook friends, uh, so I, I told him I'm really looking forward to seeing him back in Chicago again. So uh, you can add those two to your list. I know that uh, Tony and Colin have been here before. We're still hoping that there will be new announcements soon. Uh, in any case, that is, that wraps up the uh, podcast for today. Uh, keep listening. Uh, we thank you for your comments. We thank you for everything that uh, is going so far. We, we don't have an uh, announcement for the next podcast yet, so stay tuned for that. We're hoping... Uh, we will have uh, uh, in the future coming do coming down the line here. Uh, Tasha Achilleos will be back on with the second printing of Kaklak, uh, which has some updated uh, artwork and a tribute to the late Chris Achilleos. We're going to try to get Andrew Skilleter on here for Illuminart and the pre-order of Illuminart 2. So there you go. Uh, and of course, uh, somewhere down, probably later in the year, we will do our next hardcover uh, coverage uh, with Tony Witt once the uh, Target Book Club catches up because they're slow. So there you go. All right. Until then, keep collecting. Direction point. Direction point. A Doctor Who Podcast Network.